selected most of the prophets from Banu Israel to make mention in the Quran. And why has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected one of those prophets, the main prophet sent to Banu Israel, Musa alayhi salam, to command more attention in the Quran and all the other prophets combined. Why? I didn't hear you. Oh, he showed a lot of mercy to Banu Israel. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? To give warnings. Uh huh. Because the first revelation that came was the Torah. That's why he com it commands so much space in the last revelation, which is the Quran. Anybody else? Huh? Because the Jews are very stubborn, that's why. Okay, anybody else? All right. Yes? The event that occurred in this prophet, or give us clues what's going to happen in the future. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. The events which occurred in the lives of these prophets, and in particular, the life of Musa alayhi salam, will help us to understand events which are to occur in the rest of history. A very, very perceptive comment, mashallah. The reason why, Wallahu alam and Allah knows best. The reason why the Quran has concentrated on these prophets is because the life of these prophets are central to the understanding of the one true religion, which Allah sent. That one true religion did not come with Muhammad for the first time. Islam did not come with Muhammad No. Islam came long before Muhammad hmm? Secondly, that in understanding true religion from the stories of these prophets, true religion, you will be able to decipher and separate the true from the false in the years which lie ahead after the revelation of the Quran. But most important of all, that in concentrating on the life of Musa alayhi salam and the events which occurred in his life, you will have a grasp, the capacity to grasp and to understand history as it will unfold after the revelation of the Quran. And so if you want to understand the world, after the revelation of the Quran, you have to study the history of the prophets of Banu Israel mentioned in the Quran. And if you want to study the historical process and understand it, and in particular the end of history, the end of history, the events which will occur in the last age, you will have to pay special attention to a prophet named Musa alayhi salam. His story in the Quran. Wallahu alam. How did Banu Israel reach to Egypt? Hmm? With Yusuf alayhi salam, correct? who was taken as a slave and then who was put in prison and then who emerged to became prime minister who was the head of state of, it, of, of, of that territory when Yusuf became prime minister who was he what was he called Firaun do you all agree with him everybody 
Who disagrees? It's a pity we can't get any answers from the sisters. Anyone disagrees? Or you all agree with this? Yes? What was he called? You forgot the? You forgot the name. N-A-M-E name. The name of the? The name of the? K-I-N-G. King. So you're not saying a pharaoh. You're saying he was a king. Correct answer. Answer is correct. The Quran does not mention that the ruler was a pharaoh. There were many pharaohs, many pharaohs. But rather the Quran mentions that they were kings. Kings. And so when Yusuf Islam goes to Egypt, we have to look for that period of history when there were kings in Egypt, not pharaohs. When we do that, we find the pharaohs are all Egyptian. But there was a period of time when a non-Egyptian people, called the Hyksos, they invaded Egypt and they were able to conquer and colonize part of Egypt, not the whole of Egypt. Part of Egypt from the Red Sea to the River Nile, which is known as the Eastern Delta, not the airline, eh? <laughs> Eastern Delta. Delta, because when the river Nile overflows its banks, then this entire area gets the rich silt, and so it becomes very fertile for agriculture. It becomes the breadbasket. Eh? So this is the Eastern Delta, from the Red Sea to the River Nile and it is this area which is colonized, occupied and colonized by a non-Egyptian people called the Hyksos. And they were known as kings, not pharaohs. And Yusuf alayhi salam becomes prime minister. Okay, Banu Israel live in this territory for some 420 years, but were enslaved. And by the time of Musa alayhi salam, they are slaves in Egypt. My question, who enslaved them and why were they enslaved? Don't look so worried either, you know the answer, you don't mind. Yes. They, was, they were enslaved as punishment. Punishment for what? Punishment for not living? For not living, for leaving the Holy Land. Yes, go ahead. Why were Banu Israel enslaved in Egypt? Yes, Hassan, you have an answer? You're smiling? Yes? Come on. Because they are migrants from outside. Anybody else? Nobody. Okay. The Egyptians hated the invaders who came from out of Egypt and ruled over that part of Egypt which is known as the Eastern Delta. They hated the Hyksos and they adored their own leaders who were the pharaohs. Indeed, they worship their leaders, the pharaohs, as gods. And so when the pharaohs finally succeeded in defeating the Hyksos and driving them back out of Egypt, Banu Israel, 
who, who had a privileged position <laughs> under the Hyksos. Hmm? They lived in a privileged position. They were now punished. Punished for supporting the enemy. <laughs> that is why they were enslaved. Yes. Hmm? Okay. Which enemy were Banu Israel supporting? Who can answer that? I just told you. The Hyksos. The Hyksos. The Hyksos were not Egyptians. They came from outside of Egypt and they invaded the Eastern Delta, they conquered it and they colonized it and they ruled over it. Hmm? While they were ruling over it, Yusuf al-Islam came. And then after Yusuf al-Islam was made Prime Minister, then Yaqub al-Islam and the whole family came. And the Hyksos now gave Banu Israel a very high status in society. And so when the Pharaohs succeeded in defeating the Hyksos and driving them out, Banu Israel are now punished for having supported the enemies of Egypt. <laughs> okay? All right. What is the name that the Quran gives to that territory where Banu Israel lived? The Hyksos ruled over it, the Eastern Delta. The Quran gives a particular name to that territory which is crucial to the understanding of Ashura. What is the name? Anybody? Hadiyah. Huh? Hmm? Hadiyah. 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 Madian. No, Madian is on that side, the Sinai Peninsula, Madian. The answer is Mim Sod Ra. Misr. Mim Sod Ra. Misr. Today, the word Misr stands for the whole of Egypt. <laughs> You're going to Misr. <laughs> and when someone is an Egyptian, he's known as Misri, Egyptian. <laughs> but for the Quran, no. Misr is only that part of Egypt over which the Hyksos ruled and which, was, which is now known as the Eastern Delta. Good. When the time came, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise Musa alayhi salam and to send him to Fir'aun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him with signs. And these signs would impact upon Egypt and they were meant, meant to wake them up, to get them to accept that the message of Musa alayhi salam was the truth. The truth. And that the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, release Banu Israel, allow them to leave, must be obeyed. The first sign, everybody knows it, so I don't have to ask you. Take your rod and throw it on the ground, Musa alayhi salam and it will become a snake all right now go on hold hold the tail of the snake don't be afraid come on hold it well, of course he's afraid but when he holds it then the snake becomes a rod a rod not another snake That's a rod that was sign number one how many signs were there in all anybody Two. Who said nine? Nine. How many signs were there in all? The Quran mentioned.